Roblox Epic Minigames offers a variety of ways to keep us engaged with their game. From in-game items to collect, to achieving unique and insane leaderboard statistics, to exploring the new minigames and maps, and more. Part of what drives the player base to the game is this feature called Seasons, that has been a common norm for several Roblox games. Part of their seasonal updates comes along their weekly leaderboards. Ever since Season 2, weekly leaderboards have been a tailored feature to every season update. Now you're probably wondering, what are they? How do I get myself onto those leaderboards efficiently? What types of prizes do they offer? Hello and welcome. My name is Insights Beep. Back with another Epic Beatings related video, and today, we'll be going over everything there needs to know for weekly leaderboards and how to successfully get onto there. Let's get started. What are weekly leaderboards? These leaderboards only come around when a season is active. Throughout the season, the weekly leaderboard goes through a weekly rotation. What do I mean by this? Well, for example, on the first week of the season update, the first weekly leaderboard will have a specific minigame genre. The following minigame genres are Survival, Racing, Versus, Teams, Controller, and Luck. Every single minigame has their own genre. Between Season 2 and Season 5, the weekly leaderboards follow the specific rotation format. Week 1 is Survival, Week 2 is Racing, then Versus, Teams, Controller, Luck, Luck again, and for the final week is Survival again. Season 2 however had its longer duration time, meaning there were more weekly rotations. Now ever since Season 6 and beyond, the developers have changed it to where the weekly leaderboard genre rotation is randomized so players don't keep track and schedule when it's their time to shine for the board. This in turn received mixed feedback from the players. Now, if let's say the first weekly of the season says racing wins, this means that this weekly leaderboard is only calculating wins from minigames with the racing theme. This is crucial to remember if you're doing the weekly leaderboard grind for the first time. If you're unsure of which minigames houses a theme, head on over to the minigame queue board, go to the search bar at the bottom, and type in whatever minigame genre you're researching. For example, I'll type racing. By doing so, every minigame that has that genre will pop up. Again, this applies to all minigame genres as well. What kind of prizes do the weekly leaderboards offer? Every single season, a new set of prizes are offered for the weekly leaderboard. Here are examples from Season 2 through 6. This encourages the player base to snatch these prizes before they no longer become obtainable again. At least for now, hopefully. So if you see a cool looking weekly leaderboard prize you want to collect, now it is time to grind it before the season ends. Now, how can I successfully get onto there? Well, it really depends on which place on the leaderboard you're specifically aiming for. There is a prize to obtain for being a top 100, another one for the top 50, and a third one for the top 10. If you manage to stay in the top 10 by the end of the weekly, you'll be able to claim all three at once. Being in a top 100 or top 50 is quite easy for the majority. So for this video, I'm going to be explaining the best grinding methods of sustaining yourself within the top 10 ranks of the weekly leaderboard. By even doing one of these methods, you can rest assured that staying in a top 50 or 100 is a walk in the park for ya. Alright, here are some ways of efficiently staying in the weekly leaderboard in Epic Minigames. Tip number 1. Participate in minigame spams. What is a minigame spam you may ask? A minigame spam is where a server or player queues the same minigame over and over again, whether it's to farm for easy and quick wins, farming coins, and or to maintain themselves on a specific leaderboard. Hosting minigame spams can be quite costly for some, unless you're loaded with minigame choices like a champ. So if you're let's say 10 cents away from bankruptcy, your best bet is to join a spam 
that spams the specific minigame that counts towards your currently weekly leaderboard. If let's say you encounter someone spamming a minigame that is racing themed and you're grinding for a team genre weekly leaderboard, then that spam is not for you. Unless you're really into those free wins then be my guest. If you can manage to host your own minigame spams for the weekly, then tip number two is for you. Solo spamming. This means a player is in a dead server with an alt or a friend spamming the same minigames for the same purpose as the first tip, but being alone in a public server. This is more tricky to pull off though because random players are bound to join you and sabotage your spam grind, and you don't want your top 10 weekly leaderboard competitors to be in the same spams as you obviously. Unless your competitors are your friends of course. There are two types of servers to solo spam in, normal and pro servers. Do not solo spam in a large server because for every minigame choice you purchase, they charge you extra. That is unless you're, again, loaded with minigame choices or you're loaded with robux. You will want to solo spam in a dead server. A dead server is where there is no one in it besides you and whoever that tags along with you. In my opinion, I prefer solo spamming in pro servers, mainly because some minigames can go by quicker, and there is a less chance of some low level newbie noob stumbling upon your spam, crying their eyes out accusing you of being some sort of hacker for choosing the same minigame over and over again. Boy do we EM grinders love that. To find a dead pro server, you would first need to grant access to them of course by reaching level 24 first. Then, when you join a pro server, and if it has players in them, block one of them, switch back to normal servers, hop back into pro servers, check to see if the second pro server has players in it, and if so, block one of them, and repeat until the pro server boards has its green play button loading. This means that it's creating a new and empty pro server for you, and once it's finished, you will automatically be teleported to it. There will be a small, small chance of a few players spawning with you, so if that's the case, wait for them to leave or do the process again. Once you got a pro server to yourself, spam away. Please note that if you are in a pro server, you need at least two accounts to start playing the minigames. If a group of randoms come in while you're solo spamming, you could either wait for them to leave or do the process method earlier again. It sounds hectic to do, but if done successfully, you'll rock the weak leaderboard with ease. Tip number three, account sharing. The Epic Minigames developers allow its players to account share. It is not against the community rules for grinding. So if you have a sibling or a close friend that you both trust each other and are willing to help grind for you, that can help you secure your leaderboard position. This is extremely beneficial to those who work full time, attending school, or for other personal matters. Remember to ensure your Roblox account has a verified personal email and other security layers so you don't lose your account and limit your helper with what they can really do to your account. If you ever somehow lose your account to the helper, that is on you because you're the one granting access in the first place. Tip number four, farming wins in Epic Party. Here's how to demonstrate this. First, have you and your alt account join the epic party mode. Next, have the account you're grinding on create a party match. Set the max players to 2. Make the match private so no randoms come in. Select the map of your choice. In my opinion, I go for typical hills. Set it to 100 rounds. Now for the minigame conditions, depending on the minigame genre for the weak leaderboard you're grinding, you will want to solely enable that type of genre. For example, if you're grinding in a survival weekly, only enable survival games. If you're grinding in a luck weekly, only enable luck minigames, and so forth for all genres you're grinding for. For this demonstration, I'll only enable racing. Now open your party match so your alt account can send an invite to join. Accept the alt's invite, and once you're both ready, start the match. Wait for the match to load.
Once finished, roll the dice. In a moment the party match officially begins, remove your alt account from the game. Now that you're on your own, you can win minigames easily without the hassle of using two accounts at once. You can AFK farm an epic party by installing an auto clicker and having it hover over the roll button. You can AFK farm in party mode except for the following genres, luck, survival, and racing. By AFK farming in these, it wouldn't be efficient. You can still try, but the win rate will be extremely low. Once your party match ends, Repeat the same process until you reach your epic party win limit. Remember, VIP server wins and epic party wins are calculated and accumulated the same. The max limit is 1000 wins. If you purchase the VIP game pass, your limit will be increased to 2000 wins. This will refresh back to zero once a month, so make sure to plan ahead of when you're party farming and farming in a VIP server if you're ever interested in grinding for a weak leaderboard. Here are some other minor tips to share to slightly enhance the weekly leaderboard grinding experience. When the weekly just refreshes and it's the genre you want to grind for, ensure you're taking a bathroom break, grab some snacks or drinks, grab some friends in the VC to keep you in company, or have a YouTube video or movie playing, and off you go. Ensure you got nothing planned for that week, of your grind of course. Pull some all-nighters to further fuel the grind, now, just to be clear, that filling up a public server with you and your alts is bannable. Farming with one or two alts is fine. Also, raiding servers is punishable. Raiding is where you and a group of alts or players sabotage a person's grind and harass them. Can also get you a punishment by the staff of the game. The whole point of the weak leaderboards is to encourage the player to grind the game for unique rewards and that no one should really take them seriously. If you insist on doing so, then I would like to offer you a blade of grass. I would like to briefly touch base with the seasonal leaderboard. For every season update comes with weekly and seasonal leaderboards. The seasonal leaderboard counts wins for all minigames and it closes when the season itself ends. There's a prize for the top 100, top 50, and top 10. I personally don't focus on them too much, really. And that is it for this video. If you found it somewhat informative or educational, please consider subscribing to help encourage me to make these kinds of videos in the future for you guys. If you have any other tips to share for weak leaderboard grinding, feel free to post them in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care, love you all, stay safe, and peace.